Hello and welcome. I'm Brian Bulky, the very proud superintendent of schools serving the communities of Goffstown and New Boston. I'm joined today by our business administrator, Mr. Scott Gross. And Scott and I are here today to share some information with all of our families with respect to anticipated challenges for school bus transportation next year. Now, Scott, I think everyone is probably largely aware that they understand that there's a, a local, a state level, and even a national school bus shortage. But unfortunately, the circumstances that we find ourselves in now, we have significant changes to our runs for next year as well as bus stops. So the purpose of this video is to share that information with parents uh, ahead of us publishing the bus routes. But Scott, can you talk a little bit about what are the things that we've tried to do to try to incentivize school bus drivers, to recruit school bus drivers? I know that we had an article that was in the front page of the Union Leader that was um, yeah. a, a picture from Glen Lake School that we desperately need bus drivers. What have we been trying to do here for the last year plus? So, Brian, there is no doubt that we are in dire need of school bus drivers, again, in Goffstown, New Boston, but statewide, nationally. Uh, we have been very aggressive when we work with STA, which is the Goffstown Truck Center, uh, with regard to our marketing. So we have put up signs everywhere. We've done social media. There are billboards on I-93 all over the state to try to attract people to drive buses. There has been an aggressive campaign in terms of compensation, Brian. So um, we, the pay has been raised. We have paid training for, for bus drivers, uh, but the situation is dire. Um, I insisted that we use the word desperately need because we do desperately need folks to be bus drivers uh, in our community uh, to help students get to school. Yeah. So here, here's the purpose of the video. We're gonna go through, we're gonna have our leadership team from Goffstown Truck Center from STA, Student Transportation of America, come in and go over the changes. But more than anything, we wanted to directly communicate with all of our parents and all of our community members to let them know we are in desperate need of drivers. So if anyone is interested, please contact the Goffstown Truck Center if you're interested in driving. If you can do some days, but not every day, you can do mornings only or afternoon. We are in such dire straits that we will um, we will take and train you. You, as Mr. Gro shared, paid training. We have sign-on bonuses, a number of financial incentives. But what we're going to go through today is we're going to explain that there are significant changes to our bus routes. So if if you have kids in the Goffstown or New Boston school system and you know that your kids drive, ride on bus, you know number whatever, that could be changing. The routes are changing, and certainly we have a number of bus stops, Scott, that will be changing. Right. And I know that when we have um, the folks from the Goffstown Truck Center come in, they'll talk about uh, that we've worked closely with our police and fire departments. We've gone out and evaluated. We've driven the bus and looked at, at all of the stops. We're working closely with our um, departments of public works if we need to add some gravel or some hard pack uh, to make a better, more appropriate, safe area for kids when we have new bus stops. But that's what we're here to communicate today. All right, and really, uh, I re we're gonna speak to the uh, leadership at STA pretty soon, and then we'll go over things in more detail. And I think more than anything, Scott, again, we continue to need our parents and our guardians to partner with us. We are not doing this by choice. We're not making these changes because we thought it would just be a, a nice time to do that. We are making these changes because these are desperate measures based on the number of bus runs we're able to put on the road. So uh, stay tuned, and here's an overview of what the expected changes will be in both Goffstown and New Boston. Hi, I'm Scott Gross. I'm the business administrator for SAU 19, and I'm here with the leadership from Student Transportation of America, also known as the Goffstown Truck Center, and I'd like to welcome Allison, Lori, and Katie. And um, I, first off, I want to thank all three of you. I know that um, you know, we're in a unprecedented times with COVID-19 and the bus driver shortage, which is, as Brian and I stated, it's, it's everywhere. Um, but Allison, you know, in, in particular, you know, can you tell us like where we were in terms of the number of, of bus routes in both New Boston and Goffstown and where we're going to be projected to be? And that is in our current state. It could be different. In New Boston, we had 11 routes and we um, are moving toward nine routes for this upcoming year. And in Goffstown, we had 22 routes and we're moving to, toward 15 routes for this upcoming year for home to school transportation. Right. And, and similar to, uh, to last year and the year before, we're not providing any Mountain View uh, co-curricular or athletic transportation. We simply do not have enough bus drivers. And last year, um, 
it was uh, it was very perilous. I mean, we had only a couple of drivers who will do uh, co-curriculars or athletics. Yeah. And um, I tell the story. There was one instance where there was no driver. There would have been no transportation. Might have had to cancel a football game because we couldn't get the kids out there. And one of your drivers uh, decided that he would drive the bus in lieu of going to his 30th anniversary dinner with his wife, which, you know, great guy. Um, but we can't count on that, you know, long term. So I want to bring up a slide here and I want to kind of, if we can kind of talk to this. So uh, this first slide here is New Boston Elementary and Middle School routes. And um, Katie, if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, how you use software in terms of making some of these adjustments. Yeah, so we have a software called Versatrans that we use to give us an idea of where these buses should travel, pick it, getting all the students on the buses and um, doing it in order so that it makes the most sense they're on the, t the bus the least amount of time and the yeah, least amount. Yeah, and that miles. was really key, right? So when we mm -hmm. talked about, about this, we knew that we had to redo the routes, but then some of the things that we, that we discussed was, hey, how can we make it so that it's more streamlined mm -hmm. and also reduce the, the amount of time that kids are on the bus? Mm -hmm. But that does come with a, a consequence. And, and Lori, uh, I'm gonna go to the next slide. That's New Boston, and then as you can see, here, uh, this is the Goffstown route. So I kind of, looks like a lot of spaghetti um, in a bowl, but you'll see that these are more streamlined. You see there are buses that, that technically might have passed each other. Uh, now, they, now they don't as much. Um, but what we're gonna see is far fewer, um, we're gonna see some condensed bus stops, and that's one of the keys. But, but Lori, um, what I wanted to share, you know, talk, for you to talk about a little bit is, we used to go down a lot of cul-de-sacs, yes, right? Yes, yes. In, in every cul-de-sac you go down, it's more time and more time. So we, we've pulled out of a lot of cul-de-sacs. We're going to ask the students to walk to the end of the streets with their parents. And um, it's going to save a lot of time. And also consolidate, um, we consolidated the amount of children on each bus. So the buses were evenly dispersed with children. Yeah, so one of the things that we did this year is we did a survey in, in New Boston um, and we tried to determine how many of the kids are going to actually be taking the bus. And we found that uh, about 20% of the students uh, we know are not going to be riding on the bus. So that enabled us to, you know, to do some of these, you know, these route changes. Um, one point that I wanted to make, uh, which is really critical for those of you out in the, in the audience, is that state law and school board policy are very similar in the sense that students um, can, uh, their stop can be up to one mile from their residence. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned walking, but walking isn't the only way. That's technically not the responsibility. Uh, a parent might decide to drive yep. their kid. You might have a neighbor who, who might go with them. But yeah. um, what we're seeing is that in the vast majority of these routes, uh, it's about a half a mile or less Correct. to the, from the residence of the student to the actual bus stop itself. We do have a few outliers. Um, we have a couple of these stops that are uh, more than a half a mile. We have one that is almost one mile, uh, mm -hmm. so it's 0 0.9. Yes. Um, but due to where that, that residence is, uh, it's, it's on the, uh, the Manchester side of, of Goffstown. There is no way of getting a bus in there. Um, mm -hmm. So those are some of those, they are some anomalies. Um, so Allison, I know that when you had offered and our police departments in New Boston and Goffstown, they went on the buses, right? Yeah, they did. It was very exciting. It was a nice partnership between our bus company, the school district, and the poli uh, police department. And we had fire mm -hmm. uh, department from New Boston on the bus, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, they went out and reviewed all the stop changes with uh, Lori and Katie. And one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that uh, the public safety officials in both of our communities uh, felt comfortable where these where these stops yes. were, yes. Um, yep. and there were some where they made some recommendations. So and we made and we made some changes. So you know, safety is is of the utmost importance. And as Superintendent Balky stated, um, you know, there there was a couple of areas in New Boston where we're going to work with the road agent and uh, put some hard pack down, make it a little bit a little bit safer, you know, for the kids. So now we're going to be discussing some of the new bus stops in the uh, community of New Boston. And as you can see here from this slide, we have nine uh, new bus stops. And essentially what I mentioned before when we were discussing this with STA is that we have new bus stops. Again, we're not going into many cul-de-sacs. And what that means is that there are uh, potential distances between the students' 
residents and the new bus stop. And you'll see that in the column of potential walk distance. And we also have another column here for the number of students that might be uh, impacted by that. So as you can see, um, the old stop was a Christian Farm Drive, and now that'll be the intersection of Francistown Road and Christian Farm Drive. Uh, Arrowwood Road uh, will now stop at Bedford Road and Arrowwood Road. Dane Road will now stop at the intersection of Clark Hill Road and Dane. Town Hill Road will stop at the intersection of Old Coach Road and Town Farm Road. Uh, Pearson Lane will now stop at McCollum Road and South Hill Road. And then the end of the circle on Stiles Road, that will now be at Stiles Road and Hemlock Drive. Last three are Woodbury Road and Howard Lane. That will now stop at the intersection of those two roads. And then Summit Drive will now stop at McCurdy Road and Summit. And lastly, Bog Brook Road will stop at Bedford Road at the intersection of Bog Brook Road. So again, these are things that we don't necessarily want to do, but we have to consolidate and shorten uh, the lengths of these routes in New Boston to make that work. And as you can see in that column, uh, we have some students uh, that the distance is as high as uh, 0.7 uh, miles from their residence to uh, the new bus stop, uh, as little as uh, 0.2. So our next slide we're going to be discussing is Goffstown, and Goffstown has approximately 22 uh, routes that, um, that are changing in terms of where the bus stop locations are. Uh, the first one is that one that I mentioned earlier. That's kind of like the anomaly where this uh, arrow head drive um, is kind of in uh, Manchester type area. So we did work with the Manchester Police Department and Manchester School Board. We're gonna be having a stop that's at Upland Street and Mason Street. And that this one here happens to be the longest uh, of all of them, but there's no way for really for us to get a bus uh, down on that, down where that location is. And then you can also see here that uh, these old stops, uh, Crockett Drive, Oak Lane, Juniper Drive, Pollard Road, Durango Drive, and Coriander Way. They're all gonna have um, uh, different stops. We're not gonna be going down those streets, but we're gonna be stopping at intersections, uh, which you can see. We're also gonna be publishing uh, these uh, as well on, on the new bus routes. But as mentioned before with New Boston, um, some of these, the, the Oak Lane one, uh, it's 0.7 miles. And that's, uh, and as well as the, uh, the Juniper Drive, those are kind of the more longer ones. And again, as I mentioned before, these are the distances from the student's home to the new bus stop. All right, so now we're gonna get to the remaining bus stops that are changing. Um, so these, I'm gonna just read these down to you. Uh, the end of Winter Hill Road, um, Upton Lane, uh, Glenwood Drive, Ben Circle, Durango Drive, Coriander Way, uh, Friendship Drive, Harvey Drive, uh, Van Buren Circle, Walnut Hill Road, Magnolia Road, uh, Janice Drive and Joyce Drive, uh, Gorham Pond Road, and Monarch Avenue, Tanninger Road, and Goldfinch Road. So these are all um, changes to existing bus stops. So the new bus stops are going to be at uh, new intersections. And again, this one, these range from 0.2 miles upwards uh, to 0.4 miles. So again, um, in some cases, uh, we impact about 10 to 14 kids on some of these changes. But as I mentioned earlier, and so did Superintendent Balky, uh, this is not something that we necessarily wanted to do. But based upon the current situation with the uh, bus driver shortage, this is kind of what we, what we have to do. The other thing that I wanted to to talk about some of the silver linings and if we can go to our next slide and uh, Katie you had mentioned that one of the goals before was to try to streamline things have kids on the bus a shorter amount of time but one of the good things was New Boston and, and talk a little bit about that high school route that routes that you were able to uh, make some changes on. Yes, yeah, so we were able to add some transfers in New Boston for the high school in the morning so that those elementary buses can get out there and pick up the kids but the high schoolers are still able to sleep in a little bit later because you know at last year it was about 535 the earliest bus stop was and this year we're at 625 being able to utilize those transfers in new boston yeah and i for think the high school again i it's been a while since my kids were in high school but uh you know waking up at you know five o'clock or 5 30 in the morning to hit the bus <laughs> by 5 45 mm -hmm. uh wasn't exactly fun no. so that's uh there, that's one of the one of the bright bright spots, mm -hmm. and then the other thing from uh, that we're seeing is that we're going to have fewer buses that are 
on certain like PM routes because we know that we have a lot of high school kids that are not using that type of transportation. So I've gotten, a, I've gotten phone calls and feedback from the community. Hey, you know, why do we have so many buses that are half empty? And this really kind of took a look you know, at a lot of that. Uh, the next slide that I want to show you is a, a mobile app. And uh, Allison, this is something that you know, last year, Superintendent Balky was adamant um, in talking with you and your leadership team about using technology. So can you talk a little bit about uh, Safe Stop and, and what are the, some of the features that, that this gives parents and guardians? Well, this is a great um, app that allows uh, parents and students to know when the bus is going to arrive at mm -hmm. their bus stop. Yeah. So um, Katie is the person who put all the routes together um, into this Safe Stop app and we have a short um, one-page registration form that parents can use. They're going to need their uh, identification number, yeah, their, their student, student ID, ID and we'll have all of this on the website, folks. Right. So um, you'll, you'll, we're going to send it out again. You're going to see a lot of com communication over the next couple of weeks. So uh, we intend to publish the bus routes the second week of August. Um, undoubtedly, there will be uh, questions. I will say, I'll reiterate again, um, the both police departments, superintendent of, of schools, myself, um, and uh, STA, we've we've been uh, very cognizant of, of making sure that there that the safety concerns are met. But we are in desperate, dire times, yes. and um, because of that, we are not going to be going down a lot of cul-de-sacs or roads that we once did. It's going to require students uh, to either be transported to or walk to a bus stop that's further away, and it's just the reality that we find ourselves in. Um, and if those of you are out there uh, can help and become bus drivers, we would, uh, you know, we would greatly, you know, greatly appreciate it. Um, what, last, I want to close in saying um, I want to thank uh, the leadership team of SDA. Uh, they put an incredible amount of, of uh, hard work and effort into terms of, in terms of recruiting and the rerouting. Um, if you do have questions about uh, these bus routes, please contact your school, the child, child school. Uh, if it's something that that, that that school can't answer, uh, then the phone calls will be referred to the SAU and, um, and, and we'll, we'll discuss that with you. But I can assure you that we've done the very best that we can. And at this particular point, this is kind of one of the community sacrifices that we have to make uh, because of the situation that we're in. So again, if you're interested in driving a bus, contact STA. The number there is what four nine seven three one one one. That's correct. Right. I, I think I have that in my. I sleep with this number. <laughs> um, so with that, again, thank you for all of your your hard work, and for those of you in the community. Um, again, if it wasn't so desperate and dire, dire, we wouldn't have been doing some of these things. Um, but we have to do it. So let's get more folks out there driving, and we can uh, make things more back to normal. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.